The All Press Podcast with Connor McKenna, Eric Macromella, and Sean Starr starts now. Very excited to welcome you back to a new episode of All Dress. I'm Connor with Sean and Eric. Hello, 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 everybody. Hi, everybody. My man. My All man. Right. All right. Eric Scott, what is that, an umpire hat? No, it's a Major League Baseball hat. Oh, my God. You're like Rob Lowe with the NFL I was going to say, it looks <laughs> like when, when, when Rob Lowe went to the football game and wore an NFL hat. Yes. Yeah, not, a, know, not as totally. handsome. Totally. Almost as you know, as Rob Lowe. Close. This hat I got from Major League Baseball, so I do some of their IP work, and they had a meeting two years ago at all places, Fenway Park for their international legal counsel from around the world. And that was one of the coolest meetings I've ever been to. I've been to Fenway to watch a game, but never been inside uh, Fenway Park. And that was just a really, really cool moment. Made going to law school, uh, totally worth it. <laughs> that, that and all the money. Yes, the, the money, makes it, <laughs> money makes it very worth it, yes. It's, uh, you know, I, that, that's a top four for down the road, top four places you've ever been to a meeting. Yeah. Eric, Eric oh. have his beat. Okay, I was thinking you're the top four favorite monetary bills. Oh, well. <laughs> that are currently in your wallet. Do <laughs> coins count as bills in my case, please? <laughs> only, only quarters and higher. Hey, you That's know what, right. guys? Guys, you know, I just, I, I know, I said it on, on the air, but I just want to say it again that a lot of us are stuck at home or in the office, and it's really quiet. And you guys have been a constant, ever-present, positive companion along the way of I, your show. That, and I'm right. saying what a lot of people feel. And for that, I want to thank you guys. And I yeah, totally continue. mean it. Please continue. Let's just make this the podcast. Okay. Yeah. Lay it on me. Butter me, yeah. butter me up like a slice yeah. of toast. <laughs> <laughs> but no, thank you, man. Like, it's nice to hear, right, from listeners, because, you know, uh, it's what uh, I think has attracted me to radio from when I was a boy. And I would be at, like, our family breakfast table and my dad always had show them on the radio that was the morning show yeah. of choice in our house and it's just that intimacy you know it's it's voices it's using your imagination what do they sound like what do they look like in real life uh trying to you know paint a picture based on on your voice and like whether it's like when i was a kid and you're listening to us at breakfast or you're just in the car stuck in traffic with you two montreal voices talking mm-hmm. to you you know so it's uh i still love that aspect of this of this medium you know, I guess what I would say is, you know, oftentimes I've listened to a lot of sports radio through my life and I've been on a lot of shows and the shows that are the ones that people gravitate to long term are those that have a, a measured, even keel tone um, and that provide thoughtful uh, input on things and, mm-hmm. and, and commentary. And too often, I think in sports talk radio, people believe if you scream louder, that's more effective. And I've always believed yeah. that that is indeed not the case. <laughs> well, I think that's why Connor and I have, you know, got along and had like kind of chemistry pretty quick because like Connor, like, can you imagine like as the host of the, of the show, like driving the show, like you're coming in, Canadians get wiped on Monday, right? By Edmonton, you're like, rah, 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 have, suck, have this, have that. And then they have a, a performance like they did in Edmonton. And then, you know, your attitude and your message to the same audience is 180 from what it was, right? I mean, it's too that type of radio is just the swings guys are just too drastic for me. Yeah. And there are people that do that sort of thing. Oh yeah. Not going to name names or anything, but uh, I do, I wouldn't be able to look myself in the mirror, take myself Mm. seriously. And I wouldn't be having any fun either. And that's it. Try to have some fun. Thank you, Eric. It's very kind. Thank you to everybody for all the nice stuff you said over the years. And even the not so nice stuff, it all helps. (laughs) I love what you said this morning. They either want you to die. (laughs) Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah, That's it. I laughed out loud. That was good. Option A or option B. You should. I mean, yeah. The other day I I was telling Sean about this sort of uh, unpleasant experience I had with a DoorDash driver and, uh, the way the, the things some of the people were saying in the text that they were sending in, it's just like, okay, I mean, I, you, you hate, you hate me, <laughs> but you're listening, which is great. I mean, thank yeah. you for the show. Why do you hate me so much? But eh, what do I know? Anyway, uh, guys, let's talk a little bit about the Canadians. We don't have a lot of time this week. I have right now about 20 minutes before I got to get out the door. Busy day, but we're getting it in here. It's possible also that the, um, I don't know what the politically correct terminology is, but the person who comes and cleans my house may... Housekeeper, yeah. Butlers? The butler's butler, yeah. Just walk in here any second. So we're going to the clock here. 
let's dive into the Canadians first and foremost before we get into our top four, uh, before we get into uh, some stuff that Eric wants to talk to about uh, uh, Mark Davis and uh, his feeble command of social media, perhaps, uh, as it relates to the Derek Chauvin verdict the other day. Uh, but right now, the Canadians, they're coming off a big win over the, uh, over the Oilers. Eric, you seemed like you were in a dark place during the last episode of the show, after the last game against the Edmonton Oilers. You've, I know, gone at, at lengths to explain that that's not true, that uh, you're on an even keel and everything's fine. Uh, but I think that some listeners expressed concern as well. And everybody, all of us, are just happy that the Canadians looked better against the Oilers this time around than they did last time. That was a really fun game last night. I fell asleep uh, eight minutes into the first period, but I did watch most of it this morning with my son, uh, Daniel. It's really cute. He loves to hold hands when we watch the games in the morning. I don't know why, but it's really, really cute. He's seven years old, by the way. Uh, you know, I, I wasn't necessarily despondent uh, about this team or feeling down. It was more from my standpoint, there have been so many ups and downs, but it seems like over the past you know, 45 days or so, this team has has played in, in a sort of similar fashion. A, a, you know, it is a team that has difficulty scoring goals. It's a team whose decor is not terribly nimble. And so I was just, after the Oilers game, what occurred to me, Sean, is look, this is who this team is. So I need to stop getting my hopes up and understand mm -hmm. that this team is always going to be facing certain challenges, playing other teams in their division. You know, the, the takeaway from last night's 4-3 win, was that you know the, the players are responsible uh, and have to answer to each other. And when Josh Anderson came out and pretty much laid the groundwork for the game, suggesting that the best approach and the, the, the must-have approach to the game was basically treating it like a playoff game um, with their responsibilities, with uh, the aggressiveness and the intensity that they brought with them. And the fact that the team, Connor, answered – that challenge, that it was public, that he made it public. It's one thing that these guys say it in the room to each other and it stays in the room that we as people in the media or we as fans don't get access to that. But because it became public and the team played the way Josh Anderson told us that they hoped that they would play is a massive um, positive as a takeaway. And it's, mm. it's a big moment, I think, for Josh Anderson in a very young career with the Canadians yeah. uh, that, that you hope, I think, we see more of. And I thought, uh, you know, I love the way Shea Weber responded to. He had a really mm. strong game, and and strong, mm. I think, is the right word, right? He just he was yes, a, yeah, a strong man, uh, imposing himself. I mean, to the point where uh, you know Zach Cassian tried to take a run at him and ended up hobbling his way off the uh, the ice, which is, I think, more bad luck than anything else. But I think it was an interesting reminder too, because what Anderson did there is the sort of thing a lot of us like to see from a quote unquote leader on a hockey team, right? And that is coming out and sort of saying it's vocalizing the feeling of, of the fans and, and hopefully of the guys in the locker room too, which is we haven't been good enough. We need to be better. And then coming out and, and delivering a performance like Anderson did. That's not who Shea Weber is, right? But what Weber did was he didn't say any of those things and that's fine. You don't have to be like that. There are different ways to lead, but he came in and he, he stepped up with a big time performance. He didn't have words to back up. He just, he had a reputation to back up perhaps. Uh, and and he, he laid it out there on the ice. And I really liked that from Weber. And I really liked it from Anderson. You know, they, I think it's, it, they showed us two really different ways to be a leader and to take, take a game by the scruff of its neck to take control. Uh, and and I, I just, I love that from both guys. I love the, the sort of the contrast in different ways of being a leader. You know, I right. just, I, I have and loved, just, sorry, Sean, I, I've, I've loved, this will be sure, I've loved just watching Josh Anderson's role on this team evolve to the point where now he has really separated himself from the current crop of Montreal Canadiens fours, and he's really developed in such an impact player. A lot of his goals, hmm. Sean, appear to be really the result of solo efforts. He's just someone who on his own can really hmm. move the needle. We haven't had this type of power forward on the Montreal Canadiens since 1912. And for that reason, Sean, I find it very exciting. We know. Was that, was that, was that Newsy Lalone? <laughs> Donnie Newsy Lalone. Joe Malone, 10 Joe goals in the game. Joe, yeah. Joe Malone. <laughs> the great yeah, Howie Morales. You know, last time they had a, they had a guy like the, with, with that kind of uh, power, speed, and size combination, he died of a broken leg. Uh, Howie Morales. Oh. Good thing right. Twitter wasn't around back then, huh? 
Yeah. Also, I don't know. I, I'm worried that we're going to get backlash for that. Is it too soon for that? <laughs> it's been a hundred years. Yeah. It's fine. But it's like, you know, like it's nice to have a selfish player to, to watch, right? And to talk about like Max Pacioretty was a great goal scorer for this team when he was here. Brendan Gallagher, great goal scorer for the Canadians, right? But like totally different ways of scoring goals uh, versus how Josh Anderson tends to do it. And I agree with your observation, Eric, like selfish drops a shoulder will go to the net. And, you know, Connor, we talked about it this morning on the show. Like it's, it's, you know, when Mark Denis brought up the fact that, Oh, you know, the Canadians identity, it's one thing to suggest that it might be, but it ain't their identity. You're like, right. You got to do this. You know, you got Calgary starting tomorrow at nine o'clock. Then again, at seven on Saturday, like it's a best of three playoff series to eliminate the Calgary flames more or less. And mm -hmm. I think that's when we can come in Connor and talk about the identity of this hockey club more than just one game. And you know what? That's also, I know it wasn't against the flames, but the flames being idle and, and having to sit back and watch that, that's a death blow game for the flames. And we can talk about these, uh, these mm -hmm. three games here and they're, I'm not going to say that they're not important. Uh, depending on what happens, their their importance will either increase or decrease uh, as, as the three games go on. But that's what you want a team to do. It's to really, really hurt a team that's watching at home. And if you're the Calgary Flames and you were watching that game last night, that hurt. Mm -hmm. That hurt a lot. And, uh, yeah. you know, here's to more of that because that's the funny thing, right? We, we talked about how it's been... Uh, it's been it's been almost like watching two teams that don't they don't want to play in the playoffs they've booked vacations mm -hmm. and they they don't want to be there in the postseason between them and the flames the last little while the canadians look like a team that uh, just realized the travel restrictions are, are not going to permit them to go on the trip they wanted to go on so might as well stick around inside canada and, and make the most of it in the in the bubble here so let me yeah. ask you connor i mean going into friday at nine o'clock uh your goalie du jour Dominic Ducharme says he wants to play Caden Pre Primo's going to play, apparently. That's what the coach said. So if we take him at his word, and it's your call to make, what do you do on Friday night? I go with Caden Primo on Friday night. Mm -hmm. Roll with the kid. Eric? I, mean, I, I would go with, with Caden Primo just to give Jake Allen a rest. But I have to say, I mean, I have loved what I've seen from Jake Allen. I don't know if there's been a game this season we have lost because of Jake Allen. And we have lost some games because of Carey Price. And any criticism of Jake Allen can't be a number one for me. It's tends to slot into a far more traditional myopic approach when it comes to goaltending hierarchy. Jake Allen has been really effective. The other point I want to say is this, is that speaking of goaltending, while the Canadians have been up and down, certainly have the tools to be successful in the playoffs, particularly if they play the Leafs in the first round, because the Leafs can't get their goaltending situation figured out. I don't care how effective Matthews and Marner and Neil Ander can be. This is a significant problem for the Leafs guys. I don't know what you think, but the, of the teams that the Canadians could face in the playoffs, my preference is the Canadians facing the Leafs so long as their goaltending isn't figured out. Uh, yeah, I don't think I, I, while I hear what you're saying, I feel that mm -hmm. I'd rather the Oilers just because for me, it's just because they played the Oilers the best, but I also don't, I think that I don't think the Canadians are in a position where they should be very picky and choosy about who they're playing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, sure. and let's not forget that while the Leafs issues in goal are definitely a, an issue, there's no question mm -hmm. that the playoffs are still what? three weeks away right now that a lot can change i'm pretty sure three weeks ago everything was fine in goal and jack campbell was setting records uh in goal for the leafs um so who knows where we're going to be three weeks from now yeah but there's there is part of me though that thinks like eric does i mean i, I want to say Edmonton, right because they won five of the seven games they played against them this season so like you want to think that obviously that's a dominant run but like there's part of me and maybe it's the born and raised montrealer that can't help but take a shot at the, at Toronto whenever I can, especially when we talk about hockey, that like if Montreal can take a game from the Leafs early, like I, I'm just worried about like how fragile they may be thinking that the demons in the past are coming back to, to haunt them again and, and playing super anxious, super tight. And, and maybe that emotional part of this series maybe favors the Montreal Canadiens in a best of seven. You know, uh, one thing I would add is that since Mike Smith has taken over in net, he's been far more effective than Koskinen. And so the more recent games the Canadians have played against the Oilers seem to have been, Connor, from my perspective, a tougher matchup for the Canadians. For sure. um, so I don't know. That's, that's kind of the issue I have. Mike Smith is a good goaltender. 
Uh, yeah, I, and Connor McDavid also has been putting up numbers lately, which also that that combination, right? A competent goaltender because Costco yep. is not bad, and a, and a Connor McDavid who's scoring three points in a in a period or in a game uh, definitely are a different story from an Oilers standpoint. Sean, who, what's your goaltending uh, plan for the weekend if it's up to you? Uh, I would go with Jake Allen on Friday. I'd go back to him again. And then uh, Saturday at 7 o'clock, go with the kid. Ah, that would be something, eh? Hockey Just to be different. I don't I don't think, honestly, guys, I don't think that e- either decision from whether Primo Friday or Allen Friday, I don't I don't think it's a big change. Anyway. I will say what I don't want to see is Jake Allen playing both these games. Yes, I, I agreed. Games. Agreed. Yeah. Um, and- let me ask you guys this. What did you guys think about Merrill in the third pairing? He played about 11 minutes. He looked pretty effective to me. Is this cause for optimism from the standpoint of the Canadians and their decor? He's nothing. Yeah. He's, yeah. Great okay. hair, huh? Mm-hmm. Handsome. Very handsome. Uh, we said that I, I believe this, that I think between him and Romanov, that is arguably from a, just yeah. strictly from a hair standpoint. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> defensive pairing in the NHL. <laughs> It's a lifestyle. Never forget that, right? You, you gotta, you gotta live that lifestyle. But you know, you, I like his experience. I mm-hmm. like the fact that, and look, I mean, it's one game, um, and and you know, we'll see once he eases in and if he can find a consistent partner. If Dominic Charm is happy with the way that tandem, you know, moves forward with the remaining games this season, I just, and I like is- the experience. I like that he was good on a bad team, Connor. I like that he was a good defenseman on a bad team before he got here. Yeah, that, and hopefully, he can keep it up. But yeah, great start build on that lots to build on and i like the way it was used to kept uh within himself right i didn't try to give yeah minutes uh what was it about 11 minutes that's good stuff uh all right we got to keep it moving we don't have a lot of time so the next thing and eric by the way eric is the one there's a lot going on in eric's life right now uh and in addition to billing at a very very at a rate that makes the partners and and everybody very happy at work, go ahead he also is getting his uh, vaccine shot tonight at 10 p.m 10 o'clock, uh, back of a van. Dimitri said, bring condoms. I'm very excited about it. But it feels Come to legit Dimitri. To it, feels, <laughs> it feels legit. But I'm really excited about this, man. I'm really excited. Good. We're excited for I don't you. want to die. I told the pharmacist when I booked it, he goes, I said, thank you. I'm not going to die. Do you know From what vaccine you're getting? Yeah. Do you know which it's, one? It's just the AZ that's available now right. to anybody gotcha. under the age of 55 in Ontario. Yeah. I think it's right. it's even 40 and under now in Ontario for AZ. Uh, Alberta and Ontario, I thought it was 40. Ontario's yeah. 40, so it's 40 up. Yeah. But what's crazy is that, you know, older people, like the lady across the street, she's a, she's a widow. She's approaching 70 years old. She's been on the wait list forever, and she's she hasn't been called. And that apparently is what we're seeing a lot of. And I offered to help her and get her an appointment, but she said, no, I guess, I don't know why, mm-hmm. but um, if people who don't know or are not, or are uncomfortable with technology, even basic tech, uh, what we consider to be basic, are not going to be, uh, not going to be vaccinated. And I think this is a problem. problem. It, does she listen to the podcast? She's a big, ha- well, she's really from Montreal. She's from Hudson uh, and then lived in Montreal for a while. So she's a huge fan of the podcast. We have over 75 billion listeners worldwide for the podcast. Amazing. So I'm pretty sure that everybody listens. How could they not? I don't, hey, listen, I'm not kidding when I tell you we only have so much time. So thank you for your support, uh, Eric's neighbor. Um, okay, let's keep this moving because we don't have a lot of time. Top four still to come right now. Derek Chauvin, guilty, guilty, guilty. Oh. LA Raiders, Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> And Burger King and Merrill Lynch and every other brand needed to weigh in the other day. Uh, Eric, Eric sent us by this was where I was going with Eric being a busy guy. Eric is the one who came up with the run sheet and the topics for the podcast today. I have them all here on my uh, on my very popular phone. Uh, and the latest one is Raiders slash Chauvin. I have mm. no idea where he wants to go with this. I assume it has to do with Mark Davis's tweet. But yeah, Eric, what do you got? Yeah, no, that, that's right. So the, the Raiders, uh, after the the Chauvin verdict was announced, they tweeted out an image of the words, I can breathe. And that's attracted a lot of criticism. And the open question is, to what extent should brand owners, companies, athletes be involved in this level of social activism? And on top of that, should the Raiders be properly criticized for that specific type of message? You know, and my reaction to that is twofold, guys. And I'm curious to know where you stand on this, that the manner in which the message was communicated, I think, reflected 
poor judgment and it was ill-conceived, mainly because by adopting the phrase, I can breathe, you have misappropriated a version of a phrase that you don't have ownership over. You know, we know that, that, that George Floyd said, I can't breathe a number of times. Eric Gardner said, I can't breathe before he died in New York. And I've gone back and I've watched a number of prison videos where black men have been killed in prison by cops and their last words are all the same. I can't breathe. Mm-hmm. And so I think the phrase that was used by the Raiders was a problem, but I guess I have difficulty with attacking what I see is genuine, uh, the genuine motivation for that. And that is to be on the right side of this conversation. So I guess from my standpoint, the phrase maybe was ill-conceived and it reflected poor judgment, but I'm okay with the Raiders engaging in this conversation. I, you know what, I guess everyone has a right. Everybody's got a Twitter account. I don't care what the Raiders, I don't care what the Dolphins, I don't care what the 49ers, I don't care what the Cowboys. I don't, this is, I don't feel like I need these Hmm. teams or groups or twitter accounts to weigh in i wish i lived in a world where i didn't have to see that and what i will say is this is no matter what anybody says and i everything you're saying is very valid there eric um it's it's tone deaf or whatever you want to call it and nancy nobody's going to beat nancy pelosi what she said on uh what was it on tuesday that the verdict came down Uh, yeah what did she say that uh thank you for sacrificing your life Thank you. Yeah. Thank you to George Floyd for you sacrificing your life for justice. Yeah. Yeah. Just, uh, Nancy, just shut up. Uh, yeah. Know, just don't say anything. It's all oh, we live in an age where everybody's got to say something, right? Yeah. Just yeah. Don't, don't say anything. I wish there was more of that thoughtful mm-hmm. reflection. Don't say anything at all. Not everybody has to weigh in on everything. Yep. That's a great point, man. And like when I when I read that tweet, right? Like it rubbed me the wrong way because I read it like a slogan and it wasn't a slogan. And I'm not, and I know that's not w- what their intent was, but that tweet read to me like a slogan. And it was the, the last words of a dying man. And, and I thought about it a little bit more. Right. And I'm like, so what if I, I was a pro athlete? What if I played for an NBA team or an NFL team or baseball or pro hockey? And I wasn't white and I was a minority and Would I want my organization to come out and show some love on social media, you know, whether I'm I'm a Raider player or um, I play for the LA Dodgers um, or an employee at uh, Merrill Lynch, you know, um, as, as, as a hypothetical, you know, minority speaking, how would I feel about my brand, my company, my employer coming out with that message? And I think if I try to put myself in that position, the best way I, I can, I guess, is that I, I would be like, good, I'm glad you did that. I'm, I'm glad you came out with a statement uh, that made some sort of impact. Because I think I think uh, if you're in that position, you can't help but feel like, oh, thank goodness. You know, not only did, did Derek Chauvin actually get to trial, but he was convicted on all three counts, which is such a rare, rare thing. So I, I do think, and speaking of Dwight Walton on Wednesday at 9.05, just this collective, oh, thank God it didn't go the other way. Uh, you know, there, were, there, there was certainly a, a sense of great relief because we have now been conditioned to expect that the outcome was going to be different in that trial and that he was going to be acquitted despite the very clear yeah. evidence of a man being murdered slowly over nine minutes <clears throat> and 26 seconds. There are some teams that can engage in this type of activism and be part of the conversation. And so, yeah, because they do in the right way, the Minnesota Timberwolves issue, issued a press release. It's thoughtful, it's pensive, it goes out. I think it's respectful. I think the other issue with the Raiders tweet, I can breathe, is that for some people, it still reflects from their standpoint, some level of being oblivious to what black people are going through, people of color are going through. And this is a, you know, a message dispatched by what they see as just the white establishment. And mm-hmm. the lack of sensitivity um, with respect to this issue for them is manifested in that tweet. And that's why for them, it feels a bit uh, offside. It, well, especially coming from an NFL team, for God's sake. I mean, let's be honest here. After what happened with Colin Kaepernick and, and the yeah. relevance of all of that, too, uh, I can't help but feel that. Uh, listen, guys, I am short for time here. and Let's that, go. Let's do, let's do our top four, baby. Top four apps. Ah. <laughs> 
Yeah. Not appet yeah. appetizers? Applications. Oh, oh so I got, sorry. I got cheese sticks. I got cheese sticks, potato skins. That is thank you, Sean. That's a very important <laughs> distinction that you made there. And I did yes. <laughs> well, we can do that one next time because that's a okay. great one. No, I was kidding. I got actually. Oh, oh apps, okay. Apps. Yeah, I was that's a, a joke. really good one, actually. That's a good here's, joke. What, here's what I got for you, okay? Yeah, go. I'm not a big app guy. I'm not gonna really, app. really. How is that? A th how is that possible in 2021? You know, everything's an app now. Clearly, he's lying. Uber Eats, uh, yeah, yeah, whatever it is. I, I like uh, Waze. I got Waze. Yeah. yeah, good helps me get where I'm going. I like the idea that I've got a better route than everybody else has. Uh, <laughs> yeah, where is that on your list? Four. Okay. Number three on my list is the uh, Twitter application. Mm. It's not a very good app. But no, uh, again, I, I just, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm not a big app guy. Uh, the, the, the oh, number two, number two, I'm going to go with the score. I like the score app. That's where I get mm. all my scores. I find it's the best way to do that. Uh, yep. I, get, I get all my, uh, so I have it here and then I press the button. Open that. <laughs> it's the button. I love that. Okay. Right? He, he, <laughs> well, he really, done. yay, he's not Connor. He told you he's not an app guy. <laughs> I got my different uh, everything here. There's live tennis right now. It lets me know. Okay, who's playing? Oh, sick. So open. All right. So I like that. And my number one favorite app is uh, is Grinder. I mean, sorry. What's <laughs> <laughs> that? I mean, I mean, I mean. Uh, I like the messages app. The messages app. This here, it's from on my phone. My messages app, and it allows me to stay in touch. No, you know what? Sorry, WhatsApp. WhatsApp. There it is. Yeah, WhatsApp for sure. I can have group convos with all my friends and and talk to the yeah. people. And and I we have a group chat. The three of us. I really like it. That's that's my number one app. Well, how many of your friends have, have iPhones compared to like uh, non iPhone phones? Sean, I I don't have very many friends anymore. They're they're all they're right. married. They're children. Yeah. But it, it is, it's the universal communicator right. because it's probably about 50-50. So like my phone, I have them in order of my preferred apps like Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Um, so my top four favorite apps, uh, Eric, I am an app guy. I love apps. I've got lots of them. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I love my finance apps. I love my crypto apps. I love my food delivery apps. Oh, wow. Um, I, uh, so I'll go, to, I'll run it down quickly here. Number four on my list um, is Reddit. The Reddit app, the front page of the internet, Eric. Um, uh, everything that I need that's tailor made to to my likes and everything else. So Reddit coming in at number four. Um, I'm a big uh, taking pictures kind of fella. I love photography. Uh, so the Adobe Photoshop app is number three. Is that good? Oh, it's good. It's, dude, it is phenomenal. And let's leave leave something in the comments if you if you think something better than Adobe Photoshop is is better for editing photos and stuff like that. Uh, I'll definitely check it out. Uh, ESPN is my favorite sports app. It's my go-to uh, all the time. And I, th uh, I think you met uh, TSN. No, no, ESPN. Um, and my, uh, my, my favorite app, my favorite app, number one, I didn't really have to think too hard about it. Uh, Instagram Macromella is my favorite app. Instagram Macromella, that's a very, that's an app that has misappropriated my last name. I love that. Do you? I love that. I, yeah, it's my favorite social media app. All right, as we wrap up here in my top four, number four, TSN on the go. I love that because yeah. I've been listening to a lot of TSN sports talk radio and um, the ease of access with this app to the different radio stations is unparalleled and it works. That's a big thing for apps as it work. Number three, Twitter. I spend a lot of time there on Twitter. I love Twitter. It's terrific. Yes, it's a bit of a cesspool at times or most of the time, but I do love Twitter. Number two, the Fantasy Pros application. Mm. I'm a big fantasy football guy, a big fantasy baseball guy, and I love data information, and they're really good at crunching the numbers. So I really love that. And number one, it's an app that has been terrific for a long time. When I had it on my BlackBerry, well, every BlackBerry app was buffering. That's what they were called. But this app worked. I have it on my iPhone. I love it. It's the Score app. It is so good at doing what it, what it wants to do and deliver sports information and editorials in a go. wonderfully Good efficient day. way you guys. you guys have to sign off goodbye peace okay thank you connor we really appreciate that uh so that's it scores uh, number four on or you number one of my list that was uh, you and connor love the score app this exit was really quite something wasn't it that was that was quite something but he's gone now why so we can talk frankly about did... connor if you'd like I don't. I don't know why I, the the score app doesn't. 
I, I have it on my phone. What makes, what, let me ask you some point blank. Yeah. What makes for a great app for you? Like, what do you look for? Uh, that's a great question. It's got to be simple to use, work, and provide yeah. the information in a way that's consistent with how I want to consume the information. So usually yeah. with late clarity. Interface. Yeah. And you know, like a pet peeve of mine, like going on any app is two or three added steps for the one simple goal of checking a score. You know what I mean? Like something simple. If you're making me click two or three times to get to a thing that every app does with one single step, you, you'll lose me forever. Or advertisements popping up unwarranted or too frequently. Agreed. But it's different, right? Yeah. It's different. Yeah. I'm glad none, none of us, none of us uh, fatsos uh, had any food delivery apps on our, in our top four. <laughs> I, got, I gotta say, I do love your idea for the next one, the top four appetizers. Because I love yeah. those hot cheese sticks. Those are fantastic. Aren't they can, so good? I could just bathe in them. I, I, I can make babies with them. They're fantastic. Do you, let your kid, do you let your kids eat that bad food? At the, of course at their I do. Rate? My kids eat do junk you? food all the time. Yeah. No, you're full of we you're just full pump, of No, no. I, we have no standards when it comes to food. Look. Like these? I don't know how long no, how, don't we're introduce all going to be around for. I, no, uh, McDonald's, the only issue is a Nicholas East McDonald's, he vomits. So I can't, <laughs> I can't give him McDonald's. Uh, and oh, the boys cheeks. have, yeah, yeah, their cheeks. I know it's like, daddy, I'm vomiting now. And then he vomits. Right. I'm like, thank you for letting us know. And Take that so, grimace. Yeah. <laughs> what the kids love when it comes to takeout is Saint Hubert. It's oh, nice. basic food and you get it at a really yeah. good deal. Um, right. And, uh, but you know, they're kids. So they're particular, especially as you get older, then it's, it's a little bit, uh, they're a little bit more particular in so far as what they eat. Anyway, I guess we are all done here. I guess Connor has walked away. Leaving more of us behind. Sean, thank you for everything you did today. Connor, thank you for walking away. And thank you to uh, the listener or the watcher. We appreciate your support. We are grateful for it. And moving forward, every episode will be 30 minutes. And that is it. 30 hey, minutes and, and we're out, baby. The Habs going to win Friday or what? And the Habs are going to compete and hopefully <laughs> win on Friday. I've learned my lesson. When I feel yeah. like I feel like they're going to no yeah. chance of losing they disappoint uh, yeah. me and it's exhausting bro it's exhausting i have to say before before we say goodbye you know with your expertise in your area of law and, and the area of law that you practice I'm, i i would love to pick your brain on what we talked about with derek chauvin and and trademark company companies coming out with clout you know putting their brand associated with with for some not everybody agrees with the verdict not everybody agrees with the verdict and you know just curious about about that aspect but that's a subject maybe we'll tackle live on the air next thursday well i just got an email eric i don't agree with the verdict signed david duke yes there might be some people <laughs> that don't agree with it but uh, if if they don't the odds are i don't really want to hear from them to begin with. but you know it is a fascinating topic to what yeah, extent should brand owners engage in social activism as part of their brand messaging fascinating topic all right man uh, it uh, has been a lot of fun take care and everybody there keep listening keep watching love you take care peace